Today we have the 2022 Chevrolet Equinox and it is finally refreshed. With this refresh, we get some new exterior design changes like this new face, a little bit of tweaks on the interior, and we'll see, did GM do enough and is this a good competitor? Plus, there's even a new trim level we'll talk about. Now, first thing we'll cover is the exterior and some of the changes, but before we get started, I wanna give a big thank you and shout out to Britain Chevrolet Cadillac in Greenville, Texas. They've been giving me vehicles and letting me show you vehicles for several years now. So if you're in the DFW area for in the market for a Cadillac, please be sure to check them out. I'll put their information in the description below. Now, of course, the exterior has these revisions, like especially this new face, you get a new rear end, and then the trim levels are a little bit different too. There's no more base L. You have the LS, LT, which we have right here, the new RS trim level, and the Premier. The new RS model is gonna give you black trim, 19 inch wheels, and it's gonna be similar to just like the former Redline model with black accent pieces. But the styling up here, what do you think of this? This is definitely different. This is, I think this is better than what it was before. You've got sleek LED daytime running lights on everything except the base model. You've got LED high and low beam standard on every single model and a little bit more of a sleek, kind of a sportier grill matching some of Chevrolet's latest design. And then you've even got parking sensors up here. This is an incandescent turn signal and we don't have fog lights, but fog lights are optional here or standard on upper trims. Now this model that I'm showing you is the Mosaic Black Metallic. So of course you've got some metallic-y flake to it and some sparkle, but there are also some new exterior colors like Blue Glow Metallic, Sea Glass Blue Metallic, Iron Gray Metal, and Cherry Red Tint Coat. And with all these colors, what do you think of the new design? Now wheels are gonna vary a little bit, anywhere from 17 inch wheels here all the way up to available 19 inch wheels on the upper trim levels. And then the mirror, turn signals are optional. We do not have turn signals on this particular model, but they will be heated mirrors, at least they're body color mirrors on every single trim level. Plus you've got body color door handles with the little chrome accent piece below the window sill. And the silhouette of the Equinox is still very similar to the last one. It's mainly changes on the front and rear bumpers and with these tail lights, as you can see back here. And dimensionally, the Equinox is about 183 inches long, so it's a little bit big for this class of a vehicle, but we'll see how that fares with the rear seat legroom, which is definitely quite good. And like I was saying, the rear end is revised and restyled. I like this rear end more than the previous one as well, just like I do the front. Now you'll get incandescent tail lamps. You can get LED tail lamps, tail lamps on upper trims, but we've just got the incandescent here with the red blinker. And it's pretty concealed down here with the exhaust, nothing fancy with that. The cargo space on the Equinox, let's go ahead and take a look. So we have the optional power lift gate. This is an option with the driver, with the, one of the packages that we have. You can get a hands-free lift gate where you swipe your foot on the upper trims, but not on this LT. But still, this is height programmable, so you can even lower it, you can set the height that it actually opens up to. So that's really nice that you can at least memory adjust that. And one nice feature right off the bat is that under here, you've got some hidden underfloor storage. That's always good to see and an extra space that you don't really realize. But behind the second row, you're gonna have about 30 cubic feet, which isn't great for this class, but it's still good enough. As you can see, there's decent distance between the wheel wells. One of the reasons it's not quite as high is because the distance from that pillar to the seat is not great, but the actual floor space is pretty good. And you can see there's a little bit of extra storage on each side. We've got tie downs, you've got a hook for a net or grocery bags. These work great to hook grocery bags up. You've got a spot for a tonneau cover and you've got the same thing over here. Plus you also get a 12 volt power outlet back here. And check it out, this is also really rare. There's actually seat folding levers. Boom, and it even indicates which one, the big seat or the little seat, so that is really nice. You don't hardly see that at all in this class, so you don't have to go to the second row to fold it down, and then you'll get about 64 cubic feet, which again isn't class leading by any means, but this is still pretty good space. Let me know what you think. Now, let's look at the smart key system and the key fob. This key fob does have a soft material around it. It's pretty slim, easy to fit into your pocket. Remote start is optional on this trim level. Go ahead and start it up starts up nice and easy and the way that the smart key system works on this GM is this button locks it and unlocks it so there's no sensor in the back to worry about it's just all off of that button 
And then with these front seats, we've got cloth seats right here. You can move up to the RS and get available leather seats or the Premier and get leather seats. But these have good bolstering around the side without being too aggressive. They've actually got kind of a nice like textured pattern to them as well. It's almost kind of like a quilted pattern that you'll see on leather seats. So there's a little bit of texture to it. And the bolsters are good without being too aggressive. And thanks to the ride height of the Equinox, this is super easy getting in and out for anybody with mobility issues. This is an eight-way power adjustable seat, including two-way lumbar support. It's got the tilting function and the height adjustment, as well as recline and lumbar. So good to go with that. Now, comfort-wise, I've only been in here a short period of time, but they are comfortable to me. They're not over bolstered. The headrest isn't aggressive. I think they feel good. I just haven't been able to spend a lot of time in them. We have optional heated seats on this model, and if you want ventilated seats, you're gonna have to move up in trim level, but you can get those on the top trim. And same goes with the memory settings. Those are on the top trim too. Now a quick look at the back seat. We've got the same cloth material back here and there's actually pretty good leg room. If you look at actual dimensions of leg room, this is definitely competitive. And one thing I wanna point out is that you still get soft materials right here and on the armrest. That's not always the case. Now sitting behind myself at five foot nine, got really good foot space and really good knee space. So passenger space is great. That seat is all the way back in its track and I'll sit back there in a second, but I'm really happy to see that we've got air conditioning vents, standard right here. Plus you've got a couple of USB ports back here. So you're good to go for your backseat passengers. In the middle, there's also a center folding armrest that actually sits somewhat elevated. So this is a good armrest to actually rest your, your elbow on. Now headroom, like I said, five foot nine, headroom is good. I've still got plenty of space to spare so you can fit tall people back here. And these seats can recline a little bit. They just don't scoot forward and backwards. But reclined in this position with the armrest and all the foot space I have, this is definitely a comfortable place to be. And the other bonus, in this front wheel drive model, we don't have any impeding area right here in the middle. So it's completely flat across. Now this is me sitting behind that seat with it all the way back and I still have good knee space and good foot space or good enough. So that's good to see. Back seat gets an A+. All right, let's go ahead and start it up. You've got push button start right back there and then everything starts up and you can see Apple CarPlay on the screen. Now for this year for the refresh, there are new trim pieces on all of the LS and LT models. Things will definitely still look the same. Refreshes just kind of update things a little bit, not a complete redesign. But if you go with the new RS trim level, you'll get jet black seats with red stitching and black headliner. Now right in front of us, this is a leather wrapped steering wheel, which is nice. You can get the steering wheel also heated. And on the back of the steering wheel is where you have your audio controls. Now, moving over to the door material wise, this entire black panel right here up until we get to here, but the rest of this is soft touch and soft. This armrest has a little bit of padding to it, which is nice. You've got your power lift gate opener down here. The driver's side window is automatic one touch. The rest of them are not. And then for the bottle opener down here, that's good size for my large bottle. And there's a little bit of knickknack storage next to it. All of your interior and exterior lighting controls are conveniently placed right next to the steering wheel. And then as we look right in front of us, so the digital display will be a smaller three and a half inch display on the LS. Otherwise the rest of them get this one here with the physical gauges around it. Now I gotta say I was hoping Chevrolet would bring us a larger digital display, at least available on some trims for this refresh, but this is the one that you get. There's still a ton of information that you can see on here. So it is still very helpful and useful with all sorts of information, but I'd like to see just a little bit more pizzazz compared to what most other new vehicles are bringing out. And then as we take a look at the rest, you can see this screen kind of propped up here on the dash, not tablet style, it is integrated, but it does sit up fairly high on the dash for good sight lines. And this is the smaller screen. This is a seven inch display, but you can get an eight inch display optional or standard on the top end Premier model. But this has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard on all trim levels now for 2022. You can see I've got nothing plugged in down there. It's all wireless. You just gotta plug it in once and then it'll be wireless the rest of the time if you want it to be. And it takes up the entire screen. You still have a couple of physical buttons down here, like your home, volume, seeking, all of that. And General Motors system here is very easy to use. It's pretty user friendly. Um, you even have Wi-Fi on here. You can also get um, a Bose speaker system on the top trim, but we don't have that on here. And while we're looking at the screen, if we shift into reverse, we've got your regular backup camera that does have 
dynamic guidance lines. If you want a surround vision camera like a 360 degree camera, that is optional or available on upper trims. Now one feature that I think is pretty underrated, which is actually standard on every single Equinox trim level and other GM products is the teen driver technology. So it allows you to kind of monitor and restrict your, you know, another driver driving your car like your teenager. So you can count on them being hopefully a little bit safer. Then moving down here, single zone climate control will be standard, but we have the optional dual zone climate control with the package that we have. So you've got nice metal rings around the climate. I like the physical buttons. It's an easy layout. You can have it automatic. You and your passenger can have different temperatures. Everything's easy to use. Plus you've got your heated seat controls right here that are three tier. Below everything, right down here, you've got a few different ports. You've got a USB-C, USB-A, auxiliary port, and a 12 volt power outlet. Plus we've got this rubber lined storage bin down here. I believe other trims, upper trims can give you wireless charging, but we don't have it on here. We also have another option, which are these parking sensors. So you've got optional front and rear parking sensors in here um, that are part of our package as well. And one thing that's new for 2022, if you move up in trim level, you can't get it on the LT, but if you move up in trim level, you can get the automatic parking assist where it will actually steer for you parallel and perpendicular parking. So that's available. Now, one small complaint coming back here is that the bottle holders, as usual with GM, they're just really small. Now, mine can fit in smaller drinks. Most drinks will be smaller than that, skinnier than that, but just a complaint with that. I like this extra little storage cubby down here. Good little spot. There is an electronic parking brake. I'd like to see a brake hold with it, but there's an electronic parking brake. This armrest is actually elevated up enough to where it's comfortable to have my arm. I like that. This is not leather wrapped like the steering wheel, but it is a good spot. And then you've got an extra little storage tray right here that's removable. And this is actually really deep down here. And there's a light. You don't always get a light in these big storage bins, but it's a nice big storage bin. And then for the glove box, this is not a locking glove box, but it's soft opening and it's good size. Up above, there's a manual flipping rear view mirror to dim it. Otherwise you can get an automatic dimming rear view mirror on upper trim levels. And then right up above, we've got a sunglass holder, which is always good to see. Some vehicles are getting rid of sunglass holders. And then right over here, it's always nice to see visors that can slide out just like that. And we don't have it in here, but you can get a panoramic roof optional if you want to. So it's nice you can get a panoramic roof even on this LT and visibility wise, you do have that little window back there. Pretty common with these crossovers to not have great visibility, but it's really not terrible. Now under the hood for the Equinox, giving it some power, there have been some big changes over the last few years, but for 2022, nothing is new. Under the hood on this model is the only option available now for 2022. It's the direct injected 1.5 liter Ecotec turbocharged four cylinder engine. It's got 170 horsepower and 203 pound feet of torque paired with a six speed automatic transmission. Now the changes that have happened is there's no more diesel that they got rid of a little while ago and there's no more two liter turbocharged engine. I actually got to drive that diesel a while back and it's really efficient. And that two liter turbo was peppy, but this is the only option you get. It's the most efficient gas option for the Equinox. And for front wheel drive models, miles per gallon is gonna be 26 in the city and 31 on the highway and 28 combined. It's not best in class, but it's not bad. But we'll get it out on the road in just a sec. All right, let's get behind the wheel of this Equinox for a short test drive. So first of all, driver assistance features wise, adaptive cruise control, the distance pacing cruise control is an optional feature, but the lane keeping system and the forward collision warning and braking is standard. So just for uh, FYI, we have the blind spot indicators in the mirror. Those are also optional features. But in this test drive, we'll go a little bit over um, the ride comfort, acceleration, what it's like to drive this turbo, how quiet it is and just give you an idea of what it's like to drive it on a day-to-day -day basis. Now I haven't been able to spend as much time in the Equinox as a lot of the competitors because I've never had one as a press car for a week. Um, so I can't speak as much on a few things, but I did drive an Equinox a few years ago with the diesel and I remember it was quiet and it was fairly smooth and it just was kind of well balanced in terms of its ride and its handling and the steering wheel honestly feels a bit a little bit on the small side maybe not small but i like it because it feels dialed down 
it's got a comfortable feel to it and the seating position is good and this road right here is a rougher textured road it's like a rocky surface and it's pretty quiet in here i really don't have complaints with that i know there's an acoustic windshield so that's acoustic noise reduction windshield and there's active noise cancellation in here to help block out and cancel out some some noises but uh, i don't have decibel ratings like i do with a lot of my press cars now we're just ho-humming along I'm gonna put a little bit of pedal down and there's a little bit of a delay but with the turbo if you've never driven a turbocharged engine before the benefit to a turbo is that you don't have to put the pedal down as much as a regular engine to get some power right away it really gives you some power pretty quickly and we'll get on it some more in a little bit the only negative is that on the interstate when you're getting up to speed and you want to really pass somebody sometimes they don't feel as quick or peppy as some other engines but in terms of driving dynamics this is very easy to drive it's easy to handle it feels like it's fairly nimble you know for this class and it's not a big vehicle and it doesn't feel like that either the brakes have a nice responsive feeling to them no complaints on those now just take it off a little bit I don't have a lot of experience with this six-speed transmission but just knowing that it is six speeds you know that it doesn't have a ton of gears to go through so it really shouldn't be too jerky or choppy like some eight speeds nine speeds and so many vehicles nowadays now on this limited short test drive I would say ride comfort is probably about average it doesn't feel super soft and floaty but it's not rough and bumpy either uh, I just got out of a Hyundai Tucson and I would probably say that that maybe feels a little bit softer but they're very very close and like I said in terms of overall balance between ride comfort and the handling this has a pretty balanced feel it doesn't need necessarily lean too much one or the other but it is fairly responsive with its steering wheel for this class and now let me show you this turbo and that turbo punch is pretty early and like I said about the six speed thus far I haven't noticed any jerkiness or shiftiness or trouble changing gears but now we're on a road that really kind of gets uneven and has some bumps and it feels good it feels feels smooth enough and if I if I had more experience on day-to-day -day driving I would definitely fill you in but it seems quiet it seems well balanced with its driving and handling it's not a standout in any regard it's not a standout with its power or its efficiency but it's just well balanced so let's go ahead and wrap things up on this Equinox so to wrap things up on this 2022 Chevrolet Equinox, this is a super competitive segment. And did GM do enough? I really don't think so because the com competition in this segment is just crazy. And some people offer so many features or have such good efficiency or so much space. And this just doesn't stand out in any one particular area, but it's just a well-rounded crossover with good space, especially in that back seat. From a feature standpoint, it comes with quite a few standard features, but there's a lot of features that you might expect to see or some more glamorous type of things on this Equinox that you just don't quite get. But let me know what you guys think down below. Do you like the new look? Do you like some of the updates that they brought for 2022? And was it enough? Also, a big thank you again to Britain Chevrolet for providing this Equinox for me to show you guys. Be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this every single week. Click the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Have a great day.